I'm gonna keep my, I'm gonna keep my two step right here. That's all right with you, Gardner. <laughs> Today I wanna talk to you about playcologies. Like Ernesto in the movie, Just Go With It, I'm gonna do something transcendent. Katya, Yuri, Ms. Wiggins, we going in deep, y'all. <laughs> As you can see, I like to be playful. And learning scholars have lots to say about the role of play on meaning making, from Piaget to Vygotsky and others. I prefer the characterizations of Huizinga, who talks about being free, being an, an act of freedom, uh, it being bound by time and space, it not being real or ordinary, and most importantly, it being order-making activity. It actually creates order. Play is how we modify new information to make sense of our world. So B.J. Miller is a hospice and palliative care doctor. He talks about what really matters at the end of life. And he talks about this through the context of caring for people at the end of their lives. So he has a lot to say about play. And I want to share with that with you a little bit. He's got a lot of views. Uh, caring becomes a creative, generative, even playful act. Sound like a funny word here, but it's also one of our highest forms of adaptation. If you look at the rest of his presentation, I think he's talking about play being an imperative component of also living a full life. We make meaning based on social need, cultural values, and expertise. So why is it that educational institutions continue to disavow or neglect first-person experiences in their teaching and learning methodologies? How can we truly advocate for, for learner-centered approaches without actually investing in the learner's centers? Chris Carter says it best from ESPN, you know it? Come on, man. <laughs> so I've been a part of a study underneath uh, Dr. Ali Card Chelman for the past four years, punctuated by an absolutely brilliant piece of literature. You should check it out. Many, many pages of fun, 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 fun. You'd love it. You'd love it. Uh, Basically, what I was interested in was looking at the intersection of A-boy culture and the digital gaming environments that they create together. That's what I wanted to know about. And I wanted to understand that through their own experiences and through their own words. And so I did that. I created a Call of Duty activity network based on cultural historical activity theory, which utilizes uh, mediating artifacts but are driven by intentionalities. That's what I wanted to understand, the intentionalities. While I was there, I found the learning ecosystem, Aaron's learning ecosystems, but based on their play biographies or playographies. So taking the ideas of play and ecosystems, playcologies emerged, which was really sweet. <laughs> and so they're driven, they're driven by the player's desires to achieve flow or complete unity with their play environment. Secondly, they are bound by socio-cultural and historical activity, human activity. Third, and it'll come up in a minute, there, there's a primary permeable boundary that exists. These are complex, pervasive systems, but the primary permeable boundary brought the notion, um, brought to rise the notion of theory, where a non-human actor was ever present within the digital landscape. Lastly, Deep metacognitive experiences towards self-reflection and growth and personal development. So back to my study in Call of Duty, it was primarily about creating social bonds with peers and creating tight, intimate bonds with those peers. Yes, it was about fantasy violence, but primarily it was about active psychomotor engagement and aggressive competitive play with these boys. Third, it'll come up, it was about identity formation through playful role-playing. And fourth, it was about playful, playfully building social capital by leveraging your expertise, which is incredible for these boys. It was an incredible sociocultural experience. So imagine being able to identify and illuminate the deepest sets of footprints within one's learning ecosystem as we traverse through the hubs through the learning hubs, we can identify uh, order-making uh, rules, tools, communities of practice, divisions of labor, which are really powerful and authentic. By phenomenologically and ethnographically examining students or learners' intentionalities, we can identify their passions, we can identify their aspirations, we can identify their goals in authentic ways. And that's me getting schmurdered by 16-year-olds, <laughs> smacked and murdered, <laughs> mostly murdered, <laughs> schooled and murdered, murdered, a lot of murdering. Mm -hmm. 
I forgot what Don's theme for this last slide here. <laughs> but anyway, we're, we're on the West Coast, right? Yeah, we're on the West Coast. So y'all up on that learner-centered next episode. No? Let me help you. Let me help you. Hey, 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 hey. Let's play every day. I say bring on the Playcologies. See you later.